In the year 2105, mankind has taken technological advancement to the next level with the creation of humanoid interface elements, or HIEs. They are human-like robots that people purchase to serve as public or personal servants. While most people see HIEs as mere robots, high school student Arado Endo sees them as equals. He'd help an HIE crossing the street, or acknowledge a vendor for working hard despite being an HIE that's just following her programming. His friends Kengo and Ryo keep reminding him that they are just tools programmed to do a certain task, but he shrugs them off. While they are walking home from school, Arado suddenly screams after seeing a cut-up arm of an HIE. His friend tells him that people are ditching their HIEs these days since they can't keep up with their maintenance cost, and hearing this breaks his heart. One night, some private military forces conduct an operation. Their goal is to hunt down and destroy five HIEs from a female unit, all of which are equipped with specialized weapons. Apparently, they have escaped from their maker's laboratory, so immobilizing them is top priority. The military first locates an HIE with a huge sword-like device attached to one arm. To the authorities' surprise, she withstands numerous caliber rounds and easily slices up the weapons all at once. The soldiers have never seen an HIE this powerful before. The armed android suddenly attacks the explosive drones, causing them to explode while she's in proximity. The sight leaves the military thinking that they've taken her down, but their ballistic drones suddenly get deactivated because of the underground electric current shortage. While they are still confused about the current shortage, they discover a bizarre abundance of flowers growing within the command station premises. To their horror, the red hair HIE bombs the main station. Through a statement released from the Meme Frame Corporation, the military lieutenant learns that the Lasha class HIE equipped with quantum computer devices are capable of complex decisions. They don't even need a network support for this. Evidently, the HIE they encountered was was a Lasha class called Type 001 Kuka. The other Lasha class HIEs are Type 002 Snowdrop, Type 003 Saturnus, Type 004, and Type 005. Upon learning of their existence, the military realizes that they underestimated just how strong and dangerous they are. Late at night, Arado goes for a quick trip to the store since his little sister Yuka ate everything for dinner. After buying some food, he bumps into an HIE named Marie. While they are walking home together, Arado sweetly tells her that he sometimes wishes that his family has an HIE like her at home. But unfortunately, they can't afford one. After a little while, they notice some falling flower petals from out of nowhere. Suddenly, Marie starts exhibiting odd behavior. It's almost as if she's drunk. All the while, a parked car starts up and almost runs Arado over. Are Marie and the car being sabotaged? To his horror, Marie is beginning to choke him to death. While just behind her, the hacked car is also about to hit them. Arado struggles, but as he's desperately crying for help, the car car explodes. Type 005 comes to his rescue, throwing Marie away. Type 005 calls herself Flasha, and she has a large shield attached to her arm, called a monolith. The flower petals are the micro-explosive drones of the Lasha class HIE Snowdrop. Though Arado was nearly killed by an HIE, he still knows his kindness to Lasha and takes her to a safer place. He says that he's going to report what happened to the police, but she tells him that the authorities are not equipped to handle the situation. Since he's at a loss for what to do, Arado can only put his trust in Lasha, and after confirming that he trusts her, she requests him to be her owner. Being an HIE owner means that he'll be fully responsible for the robot's actions, and knowing this makes Arado hesitate. But in the end, he agrees, and while they're in the process of accomplishing an ownership contract, another hat car almost hits them, but they're saved by Lasha's power. As they register Arado's biometrics in her system, the car behind her keeps on running, and another one charges in at full speed. Once the registration is completed, Arado becomes her official owner. Lasha asks his permission to attack their aggravators, to which Arado agrees. Lasha's monolith turns into a weapon that spits out metamaterial membranes, causing the micro drones to be disabled. They leave the area immediately before the police arrive. Arado brings Lasha to their house and his sister Yuga could not help but love her. Upon his sister's request, she even cooks a delicious meal for them. After Lasha moved to Arado's house, she started cooking and cleaning the house for them. While the siblings are having breakfast, Yuka receives an email confirming that they are H HIE passed the fashion modeling audition. It annoys Arado because he doesn't want to force her to do things. He adds that because of their programming, these androids are incapable of even saying no or giving any form of consent. Lasha laughs at the siblings and their bickering, which surprises Arado since it's extremely rare for HIEs to react as she did. At school, Arado confesses to his friends about Lasha. Ryu is especially interested in her, that he asks him to get the HIE's registration number. They discover that she is the top-end model. Her signature 
signature code shows she has no previous owner or any records of sale. When Ryu finds out Lasha is from the meme frame organization, he warns Arado not to get involved with her. However, he worries it's too late for that as he is now her official owner. When he gets home, Arado realizes he left his tablet with all his homework data at school. Just as he was about to leave, Lasha requests to come with him, to which he agrees. While they are on the train, the passengers keep staring at them, curious as to why a high school student is with such a beautiful HIE. They finally arrive at school. Although it's dark inside, Lasha can determine the way to Arado's classroom because of the map data from the school cloud. After retrieving the tablet, she asks for them to walk around the school for a while. It makes her happy when they go up to the rooftop and see the city lights in the horizon. Even though he's a student in that school, Arado has never been to the rooftop to enjoy the scenery and he thanks Lasha for giving him this moment, a gesture that most androids will never experience. After some time, Arado and Lasha meet a representative of Fashion Media Group, Asuna Kisaragi, for her modeling job. Asuna explains that Lasha will target high school girls and young women in their 20s. She also mentions that they've decided to hide the fact that she's a top-end HIE. It gives the young man relief because he doesn't want Lasha to gain too much attention considering how they met. As Lasha models on the street with drone cameras following her, her beauty captures everyone's attention. According to Asuna, HIE models can get more attention through live stunts than in static studio shoots. As she continues to model on the road, more and more people are absorbed by her appearance and they even begin to take pictures of her. Later on, Lasha is surrounded by a thick crowd and she seems to be having fun doing it. She is joined by two other beautiful models, Angela and Yuri. The three of them hype the crowd with their captivating looks and stylish outfits. At the end of the modeling parade, the people follow a model to the Fabian store, like they are hypnotized to do so. Asuna says the HIE are using what is called an analog hack. It's an HIE ability that allows them to create security holes in the person's subconscious and to manipulate them to do what they want. All those people start lining up with the goods that they want to purchase. While Lasha is still working, Asuna gives the tired Arado some water. Afterwards, they witness the securities force out one guy. Arado worries that the Fabian rep informs him that the guy grabbed Lasha's shoulder inside the store. It is the downside of analog hacking. Some users end up disrespecting the HIE models because they see them only as objects. Lasha's job seems dangerous to him, but Asuna reassures the company is very careful about this matter and that they are willing to give the android model bodyguards. Later that night, as Arado and Lasha are heading home, she tells him that she won't need bodyguards. She's not worried about her security at all and even says that she enjoys working there. Suddenly, they see a crowd of people in front of them and there's an ambulance too. One spectator says another HIE has been destroyed. This incident is becoming rampant these days. Using her cloud searching ability, Lasha informs Arado that three men in a vehicle attempted to abduct a female HIE and the owner got injured while trying to protect her. They notice a guy arguing with an HIE police. The police android then uses the analog hack to make him think she's human so he would treat her differently. Seeing this, Lasha realizes that once the man gets out of the analog hack's influence, he will realize this and even get angry. This bothers her and she is worried that she might have even made enemies because of the activities she conducted earlier related to it. Despite the contract, Arado reassures her and says that she can always quit if she thinks that the job is putting her in danger. He even adds that he will handle the breach of contract himself. The following morning, Arado wakes up alone with his breakfast already prepared. Just when he wonders where his sister and Lasha are, Yuka rushes in a panic. She tells him that someone has kidnapped Lasha. With the monolith left at home, he could not help but feel sick with worry. How could Lasha defend herself without it? Arado doesn't waste time and calls the police right away. However, since Lasha is an HIE, the police consider it as stealing and instruct Arado to just submit an incident report. Realizing that he can't rely on the authorities, he decides to look for her on his own. He wears a device on his eyes and contacts his friends who at first advise him to just let Lasha go because going after the kidnapper can be dangerous. But Arado is determined to get Lasha back. He considers her as part of his family and this leaves his friends with no choice but to help. Kengo tracks Lasha's signature code and locates their movement, with his friend directing where to go. Arado heads to the location riding a cab. Kengo finds out the kidnapper is bringing Lasha to a secluded place. Knowing the situation is becoming riskier, they try to convince him to report it to the police again. But Arado insists on calling for them only when he gets hurt. Then suddenly, Ryu asks where Lasha's large device is. Arado says it's in their living room, but when he checks their security camera, he is surprised that it's already gone. Ryu becomes suspicious of Lasha, so he asks for her owner whether his HIE is a red box, a technological marvel created by a highly intelligent AI system. Seeing Arado is still in denial, he points out they are tracking the kidnapper so easily as though someone is guiding them, implying that Lasha might be doing it. It turns out that Ryu is the son 
one of Mainframe's founder. He informs Arato that the time of the explosion of their research facility is on the same timeline as to when he found Lasha. But it seems hearing all these things doesn't matter to him. All he cares about is finding the HIE and bringing her home safely. It is revealed that Lasha's kidnapper is her obsessive fan during the modeling stunt. He put the seemingly unconscious Lasha inside a sack while escaping on a white van that automatically drives itself. When Arato catches up to them, the van makes a sudden turn causing her to fall out of the vehicle. By the time Arato arrives, she breaks free from her captivity, relieving that she was only pretending to be unconscious while waiting for him to rescue her. Unfortunately, the obsessed fan doesn't want to give her up, so Arato fights him and punches him continuously. The two are about to leave, but the kidnapper won't let him go. He takes out a weapon and threatens to hurt him. After analyzing that letting him deal with this man won't pacify the situation, Lasha changes her strategy. Arato is taken aback when he discovers that Lasha has somehow transported the monolith and hid it inside a warehouse. She had every intention to let Arato handle the situation at first, but the kidnapper is being a pain that she decides to eliminate him. He begs her not to kill anyone, but she points out that the kidnapper is a habitual criminal who knows how to destroy HIEs. Lasha also learns the guy has been following them the whole time and caught him watching the apartment on four separate occasions. In the face of these damning points, Arato stays true to his good-natured self and begs her not to harm him. Lasha, however, is determined and she's only waiting for his approval. He keeps refusing to let her do anything. And while they're too taken by their opposing decisions, projectile rocket suddenly targets Arato. If it weren't for Lasha's fast reflexes, Arato would surely be dead. The attacker is revealed to be Lasha's younger sister, Kuka. She's disgusted by Arato's weakness. And since she finds him unfit to be her sister's owner, she wants to kill him. Despite this, Lasha's ready to protect Arato at all costs, even if she's clearly at a disadvantage in their fight. To this, Kuka claims that her ability is being limited by a worthless owner. But Lasha gets back on her feet and proclaims that she still believes in Arato. No matter what she says, Lasha's words encourage Arato and he finally orders her to fight with him. This immediately unlocks Lasha's weapon, allowing her to use her ability in full force. As Kuka is about to attack, Lasha activates the metamaterial barrier, creating a strong shield field called Flash Maze. Even the sister HIE is mesmerized by seeing such a powerful display for the first time. She switches her monolith to pass propellant mode and instructs Arato to stay behind her to avoid the blast. But Kuka emits a dark smoke and suddenly disappears. With her disappearance, Arato and the kidnapper remain unharmed. The difference between Arato's life before and after meeting Lasha is like night and day. Now that he's thrust into a turbulent and dangerous world, he's always one step away from meeting his doom, especially given his unrelenting kind and forgiving nature. But luckily for him, Lasha is strong and she's willing to do what it takes to rise above anything life throws at them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.